MF1H2 a World Championship heads back to magnificent Doha, Qatar for round three of the 2014 season. This is perhaps the most dynamic, wealthiest and fastest growing city in the region, if not the world. Doha is a boomtown with towers sprouting out of the sands, green and carefully tended parks, endless golden desert dunes just minutes from the city waiting to be explored. There are incredible monuments, all within an ultra-modern infrastructure. A city and a nation awash in natural resources, with a keen and focused vision of where it wants to be now and in the future. Doha isn't just a modern, futuristic metropolis, it's also the capital of a nation that is firmly rooted in its history, customs and traditions. Touting itself as the power boating capital of the world, Doha is hosting the F1H2O Tour for the second time this year. And this is its 10th year on the F1H2O calendar, making it a regular and very popular fixture for teams, drivers and fans alike. The Grand Prix of the Middle East is underway. There are 16 drivers from eight teams competing in Doha. Leading the world championship by 25 points is three-time defending world champion Alex Carella of Qatar team. He's coming off another dominating win in round two in Liu Zhu, where he led from start to finish to make it three Grand Prix wins in a row for the Italian, who has his sights on equaling Guido Capellini's record of four consecutive world titles this year. Corella's teammate Sean Torrente has had a shaky start to the year, but a brilliant performance in Liu Zhu saw him go from 15th on the starting grid to finish the race fourth and earn nine crucial points going into round three in Doha. This is where he won his first and only F1H20 Grand Prix race. Qatar team will be under pressure from Philip Xiap of CTIC China team, who has yet another new boat. Despite starting the year with a runner-up finish in round one, he barely raced two laps in China before electrical problems put an end to his race. Uh, we do uh, make a uh, uh, lot of tests for my new boat. It's completely new. It's the first time on the water, first time in Formula One. And uh, I hope for, the, for this boat is better to hold. And I think uh, it's a uh, good afternoon. We do good result tomorrow. The big sensation from round two was multiple F2 world champion Eric Stark of Team Nautica. He had a brilliant race in China, finishing runner-up behind Corella, and he's currently sitting in second position in the world standings on 15 points. Being on the F1 tour is uh, uh, really, really cool because uh, many of the guys is like, uh, like big names you have known for many years and like last race when I heard in my radio like Tony is behind you like oh shit so it's uh, it's really cool and to drive with Carella and Sean and Tony and Chapin and Sami so yeah it's you know this is a dream come true. Two-time world champion Sami Celio has to adjust to his new boat if he's to make up for a disappointing season so far. In China he was behind Carella in second position when a fuel pump problem dropped him. To F1 GC Atlantic team's Duarte Benevente of Portugal had a bad time of it in practice, 
his boat delaminated. His bad luck began in China, where he'd collided with Francesco Cantando right at the start. Fortunately, in Doha, it was Cantando who came to Benevente's rescue, lending him a spare motor glass boat. The course on Doha Bay is surrounded by the picturesque Corniche, and it's perhaps the toughest circuit on the tour. The problem is the wave that are coming from the sea. One lap you have the wave, the lap after you don't have it, so you have Sometimes you remove the throttle and there is no wave. Sometimes you give the throttle, you have a big wave that you can see and you make mistakes. So. The skyscrapers on the side, they do not help because uh, when you pass one uh, in the middle, you can find uh, wind, uh, hard wind uh, that one second before was not there. So it's, uh, it's a challenging uh, uh, circuit. The, there is big waves like the rollers coming. So in March, I saw Philip Kjab and Ander, Jonas Andersson uh, take the nose dive because of this. They are so experienced drivers, and anyway, it happens. So I, I need to. That's why I, I never go first on the water. It's better for me, especially here, to look. The tricky conditions means prop selection is crucial here, as teams try to nail the perfect setup. So for this course, what we try to find is um, it's a mix between top end for the long back stretch and getting through the yellow and the red together and then off of this number two turn, red going to the yellow. That's a really hard area to get through the course with a big propeller that you have for top end on the back. So what you try to do is find something that's really, really big or too big, let's say, and then step it back a little bit so you can find that sweet spot in between what's going to work because you have to give up a little bit to get something that's just the way it is. I need to avoid some stupid mistakes because if I will lose equipment it hurts me a lot. It is, there is private apartment, my car is inside this so I sell everything to, to be here because this is my life, my passion and, and, my, and, and my way for the future. I love power boating and I'm the pure evidence that if you're even unable to do something but if you really want you can achieve it. Qualifying, it's a three session format, five boats eliminated in Q1, another five eliminated in Q2, and the top six boats make it into Q3 for a shootout with a course all to themselves. The conditions are strange, it's changing all the time and uh, one lap is okay, the other lap it's uh, big rollers, so. It looks like Doha, it looks great and then you see stuff like this come across, so it's. If it's uh, rough, it's rough for everybody, not only for me. Well, we'll see. Thank you. In Q1, Duarte Benevente made a disappointing exit in his borrowed boat. Also out were Bartek Marsowek of Motorglass F1 team and Caldwell drivers Ivan Brigada and Thomas Cermak. In Q2, Torrente and Schiap set the fastest times early and just waited the session out. Eric Stark and Sammy Celio couldn't make the cut for Q3, both with mechanical trouble, while Moritz Stromoy nabbed a place in the top six final shootout with a last minute fastest lap that bumped Francesco Cantando out in Q2. Q3, the final six boats with two laps each and the course all to themselves, trying to set their fastest lap times in a bid for pole. Stromoy went out first and gave it her all, but only managed a lap time of 52.37 seconds. It was really choppy and uh, I also met a lot of winds and we are running down on the fuel also. So it was, uh, it was difficult for me in the shootout, but I'm happy with the Q2. Jonas Anderson went out next. He won pole position here in round one and he was flying out there yet again, breaking the 50-second mark to record a time of 49.86. Right now, I think I beat two, so I start baddest as number four, so quite good, but it was very rough, so I hope the conditions stay for the other guys. The Swede was followed by Kuwaiti Yusuf Al Rubayan of F1 GC Atlantic team. Al Rubayan had to settle for a time of 50.39, but he was unable to unseat Jonas Anderson. Next up, Alex Carella. He flew around the circuit to set a blistering time of 49.56, nabbing provisional pole from Anderson. 
after the Italian Schiap. Schiap proving comfortable in his new boat, beating Corella's time by exactly four tenths of a second. Sean Torrente, last man out, fastest driver in Q2. Schiap watched on as Torrente hit the course. The American thundered through the course and needed just one lap to record an incredible lap time of 48.65 to nab pole position. Hey! Yes! Man, the boat was so fast today. So fast, I just had to put a solid lap and that's all that was, it was solid, it wasn't spectacular, but it got the job done and uh, man, I'm so happy. It's been a long time, it's been a long time. The starting grid, Torrente leads the pack, then Schiap and Corella, Anderson fourth ahead of Al-Rubayan and Stromoy, while Celio has some ground to cover in ninth. Up to the race was tense, nerves were taut, drivers focused, conditions were rough, with rollers coming into the bay. The starting lineup, Torrente on pole, Schiap second on the grid ahead of Corella, Celio down at eighth, Alrubayan behind him, and Eric Stark at the back because of an engine change. Yeah, I'm starting from the back and you know, now I need to show everyone I, I can handle the boat and you know, Get my get my boat up in the field. For sure, it's going to be a tough start, but uh, hopefully we get through the first corner and then it's an uh, it's a long race. So anything can happen. We will go everything for a short setup, or try to get the maximum for the first lap, and try to get maximum on one position and be maybe second in the after the first corner. That would be would be cool for me for the championship. Final seconds seem like an eternity as drivers and crews hold their breath waiting for the lights. Underway as 15 drivers dash down the 450 meter straightaway to turn one. Torrente leads the field. Eric Stark has a good start off the pontoon, speeding away from the pack, going head to head with Al Rubayan. Zhang Ziwei just avoids a collision with Philip Roms. She up nudges ahead, but Torrente with the inside pole advantage. Cantando getting left behind as Anderson sprints away with Al Rubayan on the other side. Torrente coming around, the commitment boy maintaining his lead, followed by Schiap, who was able to hold off Corella. Al Rubayan challenging Anderson. Torrente leads around the trickiest turn on the course. Schiap in second, Corella third, Cantando in fourth, Moritz Stromoy in fifth, going head to head with Al Rubayan, followed by Anderson in seventh and then Sammy Celio and Eric Stark is already up in ninth, right beside Celio with the rest of the field coming through. Anderson chasing Moritz Stromoy on the 500 meter straightaway to the right-hander, straight into the sun. And Eric Stark zooms by, leaving Anderson in his wake. Eric Stark strengthens his lead over Anderson, who gives chase to the two Team Nautica drivers in sixth and seventh, with Al Rubayan in fifth. As the boats come around turn number five, Torrente in command, then Schiap and Corella. Eric Stark in the number 51 DAC boat, locking horns with his teammate Stromoy in her Baba boat. Stark powers. <laughs> Coming around the turn. 
Jonas Anderson of Team Sweden is also passing Stromoy. She seems to be having problems. Stark now up to sixth from 15th position. Great start to the race from the young Swede. Celio back in ninth ahead of Bartek Marsowek, Ivan Brigada and Leo Zyong. Francesco Cantando of Motoglass F1 team, who has the most Grand Prix wins of any driver and 42 career podiums, in fourth ahead of Yusuf Al Rubayan. Al Rubayan staying in hot pursuit of Cantando. Stromoy has to worry about Sammy Celio on her tail now. The Finnish driver has never won here despite pole wins, and he's eager to make up for his unfortunate Q2 exit. But first, he needs to pass Stromoy. Celio and Stromoy go neck and neck around boy number one. Stromoy on the inside. Celio trying to get some clear water on the outside. It's a drag race down to turn number two. And what a move from Celio. He hurls himself into that turn in dramatic style, bumping Stromoy down another position. Philip Schiap in second, getting some excellent speed in his new more boats. Problems for Xiap's teammate Zhang Ziwei, his engine caught on fire. Zhang jumped out of his cockpit to escape the blaze, diving in the water for safety as his boat burns away. Incredibly, Jesper Force experiences almost exactly the same problem at the same time in the same part of the course. What are the chances? The Osprey rescue team and the QMSF put out the fire and bring Leo Zhang to safety. Yellow flag. My engine stopped in the turn number two and then I tried to switch off the fuel pump. And in that second, the engine just explode, boom, and then my radio man told me it's all fired, and then finish. Now I don't know, you just came on the, the straight here, and then you, the engine was just losing, uh, losing power, and then it just started to fire. So I don't know, shit happens. With the two young former F4 drivers out, the field bunched up again for the rolling restart as teams awaited the green flag. Green flag goes up from race commissioner Luis Ribeiro. Anderson caught in the spray. Celio speeds past him on the outside. Carella always dangerous at the restart. Can he overtake Schiap or even his teammate Torrente? Torrente opens his lead, but Carella is head to head with Schiap. Carella takes it on the inside. Carella overhauls Schiap, bumping the Frenchman down to third. And Schiap didn't even see it coming. Carella is now in second position, and we have an all Qatari 1 2 here at the Middle East Grand Prix. Anderson and Celio spray as he gives hot pursuit of the Finn, trying to reclaim his lost position as they come around boy number four. Torrente firmly in control, but with Carella breathing down his neck. And Shiap relentlessly trying to find a way past Carella. The field comes around boy number two. Cantando and Al Rubayan going neck and neck into the turn. Al Rubayan barrel rolls. His boat is totaled, but Al Rubayan was unhurt and safe. Here it is again. The boat sinks in a trough, losing traction. And that sends him over doing two barrel rolls. The Osprey rescue team once again on the scene as the Kuwaiti driver gets out of his boat and is brought back to shore. That's another yellow flag. We tried to fight with Kantendu. It was really a good fight, but in the end, uh, it was hard uh, for me. It's, uh, I pushed to the limit for the turn, even me or him, but uh, I think my boat want to flip, that's all. Unfortunate for the Kuwaiti who's been on an upward graph for the past two seasons. The boats are in position for the restart. Green flag goes up. Torrente followed by Corella, then Shiap third. Ivan Brigada overhauls Maritz Stromoy, who continues to slide down the field. Francesco Cantando trying to get the jump on Schiap, but Schiap holds off the Italian. Torrente and Corella lead the pack through that infamous boy number two, followed by Schiap. Eric Stark is in Celio's wake. <laughs> Trying to keep up with the Finn, 
but Celio leaves the Swedish youngster behind. Celio continues his surge, passing Cantando to move into fourth position. Great driving from Celio. Cantando bumped down to fifth, Stark in sixth. Corella really closes that gap with Torrente, but Torrente holds on. Contando tries to overtake Celio, but it's no use. Celio's too fast in his new Baba boat. Anderson is in seventh. Ivan Brigada, a former Grand Prix champion, in eighth. Polish driver Marszewek in ninth. Sean Torrente is going from strength to strength, looking for his second Grand Prix win here. Corella following him through the turn. He rips through boy number two. What a mistake. He'll be disqualified, and that's a third yellow flag as the boy is replaced. What a dramatic afternoon it's been, and it's all happened on the same turn boy. Corella heads back to the pontoon, and he'll be kicking himself for that. Green flag! That moves Shiap back into second, and Sammy Celio in third now as he tries to take on Shiap, but Shiap holds off the fin. Just a few laps left in the 36 lap, 45 minute race. Torrente has been unbeatable out there, but he has to bring it home. Behind them, Eric Stark passing Francesco Contando as their race long battle continues. But Contando strikes back, reclaiming his position from Stark. This time it's Jonas Anderson that Stark has to look out for as the two Swedes lock horns. Anderson coming around the outside, but Stark steps on the throttle and maintains his position, holding off his fellow Swede. Jonas Anderson back in sixth, behind Stark in fifth, and Cantando in fourth. It's been a non-stop battle between these three boats right from the get-go. Sean Torrente narrowly missed out on the World Championship last year, runner-up to his teammate Corella. But with Corella out of this race, he'll be able to close the gap significantly in the world standings going into round four. Anderson makes another move on Eric Stark, but Stark stays tight on the inside to hold off Anderson. Anderson surges ahead on the way to the right-hander, and he passes Stark. Experience trumps youth this time. Ivan Brigada putting in a great race as he holds off Bartek Marsuek to the delight of the Caldwell team. Anderson giving hard chase to Contando, and he hooks it, almost going over. But he manages to save it without losing his position. There it is again. Just six laps left in the race, and Torrente is on target for a win enjoying an almost seven second lead over Shiap, who holds Celio off for second place. Anderson continues his dogged pursuit and manages to pass Cantando to move up into fourth. Great racing from the Swede. No changes as the race enters the final lap and Sean Torrente has it, winning his second ever race here once again in Doha. Shiap, a well-deserved runner-up, and Sammy Celio with a much-needed third place. Final results, Torrente reigns. Anderson completes a great race in fourth. Cantando pips Stark for fifth. Best results so far for Caldwell with Brigada in seventh. Roms, Marshwick, and Cermak complete the top 10. Celebration time also for Caldwell. I don't remember one race or so difficult. Very, very dangerous. Not rough, it's very uh, strange, and uh, one lap is okay. So the lap after, it's completely uh, rough, but uh, it's funny. The world standings after round three sees Corella's lead shrink to just 10 points over Shiap, with Torrente moving up to third on 29 points and Stark in fourth. The team standings. Team Qatar head and shoulders above the field with 69 points. China CTIC second on 35 points, with Mad Croc Baba on 28 points in third.
it was first of all we had a very difficult weekend we have all the kind of the technical problems before this morning and uh, luckily yesterday night we fixed all and I was able to do very good laps and uh, catching the guys and passing them and finally in the third I'm very pleased for them you know what you know what honestly this is the, the best weekend in Formula One for me I, I swept everything I think I was fastest in every session I, I won the pole we won the race um, you know it's onward and upward from here we, we, we just carry this momentum to Abu Dhabi and I really got to thank my um, my team manager Khalid I've never been so down as I was in China after qualifying and he picked me up and he uh, he showed a, a faith in me that I didn't even have at the moment so I need to thank him for that. That brings round three to a close in Doha, Qatar. See you in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates for round four of the 2014 UIM F1 H2O World Championship. Wow, 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 wow.